Alright, Buddha Tron. This is the. Hold on, I'm gonna take a need to test on. Alright, now. The main thing here, I hope you don't mind me stealing your thunder a little bit, but I needed to comment on um these questions. I really wanted to do these questions on, you know, the WWE thing that you were talking about. So, um, I hope you don't mind me taking some of these questions. You know, I'm not wearing the sunglasses today because they fell down an elevator shaft yesterday. Uh, yeah. I guess you're the master of the sunglasses. I'm just gonna stick with the low hat. Alright, so let me look at some of the questions here. I hope I get a response from you on, you know, what you think about my answers, alright? So let's go for it. I'm going to answer some of his questions too. Who is pound for pound the best wrestler in the world? Samoa Joe. Samoa Joe can do it all, but it really depends on... I don't think any wrestler can really do it all. You know, I think all of them like have a specific talent that they're great in. Like Samoa Joe's is his wrestling talent, you know, with what he can do given his size. Mr. Kennedy's is mic skills. John Orson's is his mic skills. You know, you have wrestlers that are great at most aspects but you know you never have a gr wrestler that's great at every single thing or maybe they are at some point like you have Ric Flair who was great at just about every single thing in his prime but Ric Flair is not even in the world I have to say Samoa Joe right now I'm Samoa Joe if you could watch any matches from one wrestler for the rest of your life who would it be Shawn Michaels or The Undertaker one of the two you will get excitement, and you will not get a bad match out of either of them. If the Undertaker can carry the freaking Great Khali to a good, to a semi-good match to get him a push, and Shawn Michaels can carry uh, Hulk Hogan to a great match, even though Hogan just does takes punishment and does two moves the whole match and makes it a still good SummerSlam thing, it's um, it's a great. You have a great wrestler right there in Shawn Michaels. I just wish his body wasn't giving out on him. I wish he could give us ten more years, but you know his body's giving us out because he gave his body for us. So you know he's he's not going to be around that much longer and that's going to really sadden me because I really look up to the guy in terms of his wrestling skill alright it's who is wrestling's who is this oh no sexiest woman wrestler man wrestler when I don't look at man for looks I don't really look at women for looks either it's all in their personality and who has the sexiest personality of all the WWE divas I have to say I don't know. Most of them are equal. I'll tell you the people I don't like. Uh, I don't like Candice. Candice is alright. You know, she's improving a lot. But, you know, she's not going to be the next Bret Hart of women's division. Uh, Trish Stratus is okay. But, you know, um, you know, I like Mickey James more. No, I like Mickey James more. But, um, you know, uh, let me see. It really depends on, on what you're looking for. If you're looking... At personality or looks as far as looks go I have no idea I don't really look at looks sorry um I'll just say Alexis Lurie when she was Alexis Lurie when she was in uh, her little Pocahontas costume that's how I gotta say you know but in terms of personality I love Victoria the most because uh she's actually emailed me before she only said two words thank you and a smiley face when I wished her luck things like that but um Victoria's a really awesome person you know, if you saw her, my, if you go on her MySpace, she'll, she has some really funny stuff up there. She's really awesome. I love Victoria. Alright, who is wrestling's best announcer? Jolie Styles. Is wrestling best... Jolie Styles or JR? One of them. Is wrestling... Although Vince was good at kissing Shawn Michaels' butt when he was, when he was announcing. <laughs> so Jolie Styles or JR? I'd love for them to do... I'd love for them to do some kind of an announcing together. I don't think they've done anything together. I think it was always either JR and the King or Joey Styles and the King. Never Joey Styles and JR. I would have loved to see that. Alright. When okay. Is wrestling better or worse than it was five years ago? That depends. For us it's worse because we grew up in the attitude era. But right now it's the era of getting of getting kids into it. And let me explain that to you. When we were when you were a kid who got you into wrestling Hulk Hogan got me into wrestling, and Hulk Hogan got a lot of people into wrestling. You know, when you get older, you realize Hulk Hogan was overrated, but, you know, what you can't overrate about Hulk Hogan was his ability to draw, draw in the fans, not only from wrestling, but sports entertainment in general. He drew in a lot of people. He's the reason, the start of why we're fans we are today. If it wasn't for Hulk Hogan, for most of us, we wouldn't have even turned on a wrestling show. That's the same goes for Hulk Hogan, Ultimate Warrior, Undertaker for some people, and I fell in, and I love the Undertaker because um, 
uh, there was this wrestling game, I think it was called Royal Rumble or something, or anyhow, something like that, and under, it was kind of like a Mortal Kombat wrestling game, and Undertaker was the hardest person to beat in it, so, he was my favorite wrestler, and the fact he could roll his eyes in the back of his head, I thought it was so cool, everybody at, uh, kindergarten was doing that freaking the heck out of me, until I learned how to do it, but, um, yeah, so, I'm pretty sure that it depends on what area you grew up in. If you're a kid, if you're like 12, 11, 10, then this area is going to be better because you have people like John Cena you can look up to and stuff like that. But if you're talking to us, then it's worse than it was five years ago. But it's supposed to be. You forget the WWE's worst years were 93, 90, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97. Because they were drawing in the, the, um, the kids. Once those kids got of age, then the Attitude Era happened. As you know. So that's just what wrestling's doing right now. They're bringing in new kids for a new Attitude Era. So you gotta look at it that way. Will TNA turn a profit in 2008? That depends on what talent's there and how they decide to push their talent. If they continue to push their talents the way they have, then it's not going to turn as big a profit. Because, like, I'll give you an example. Ron Killings wanted to leave. They wouldn't give him his release papers. He, he came back into it. This is just from what I heard. He came back into it. And now, from what I heard, he's in the Pac-Man Jones angle. Now, from what I heard, most of the TNA superstars, they were staying in the hotel. Or most of the homegrown WWE. And Ron Killings had to stay in this cheap Motel 6 until Pac-Man said, No, I want him to have the big, just like the rest of us. And TNA, that's not how you can push your talent, you know. Ron Killings, if you want Ron Killings to stay with you and TNA, you do not treat him like somebody that just tried to leave you, okay? You do not treat him like someone who just tried to leave you if you want him to, to really stay with TNA and think of something good. A lot of TNA talent has complained about this. A lot of TNA talent has complained about this, not just Ron Killings. If Vince McMahon retires, who should replace him? Who should or who's going to? Who should is Shane McMahon and he should have Paul Heyman on the side to talk to him about how the business should be run and what kind of air angles you could take. Shane McMahon and Paul Heyman I think would be wonderful together. Um, who, who is going to? Who's going to? Trish, um, no, Stephanie and Triple H. And, uh... <laughs> Who is the most underrated wrestler in the world? Underrated female, Mickey James. Underrated male, Ma Matt Hardy. Uh, Mickey James, actually, she really doesn't get as much hype as I think she deserves. When she was Alexis Lurie, here's a little lesson. She was the first woman to engage in a hardcore match. Now, a lot of people of you are going to say, no, Trish was. She had it with Victoria. You're not understanding me. Mickey James was the first one to go into hardcore matches against men. She not only wrestled hardcore matches, she hardcore wrestled hardcore matches against men. When she was with Raven with Raven and CM Punk, because they used to all have a stable together. When they go into hardcore matches, she went and in TNA they had the hardcore matches. They had um a Raven's Clock House of Fun match. That was she was the only girl there among everybody else in the hardcore in the hardcore match. She did it twice. And she and she got beat up and she gave it back too. She had great hardcore matches against other guys. Some of her greatest victories were against other guys. And I think she really deserves a lot of credit for that. If you look up, if you really want to see some great women's wrestling, look up Alexis Lurie, a.k.a. BK James. Look, look for her in Ring of Honor. Look for her in TNA. Look for her in OVW. Look for her in Wild Women of Wrestling. Look for her in all those things. She had a lot of great matches and a lot of great feuds I think you should look at. So she's one of the most underrated women's wrestlers. Along with, um... And it's and over okay, let's go on. And under, you know why the underrated male wrestler would be Matt Hardy. He's got a lot of wrestling skill, but you know he doesn't get as much credit as he should because he doesn't have the mic skills. But he's a great person though. Who's the most overrated wrestler in the world? Overrated female, Trish Stratus. Overrated male? Mm. Sting when he was beating up the NWO. When I was little, yeah, I thought it was cool. You know, staying, you know, one man army against the NWO. I was actually going for the NWO, so I wanted, always wanted Sting to lose. But, you know, Sting is some sort of immortal, great, wonderful figure when he was having trouble with the Black Scorpion in 93, in 92, 93. You know, it's hard for me to believe, you know, that he's this unstoppable force now that he was then. And that you try, you try to revive that. But, you know, I think WCW ruined his whole gimmick when they made him talk again. When they made him, when they made him part of the Wolfpack, and he started talking again and talking trash, I, I just um, 
and he just lost all his character, basically. So, overrated. One of the most overrated moments in wrestling history was Sting coming down from the Raptors, beating up the NWO. That is one of the most overrated moments in wrestling history. And Sting was a part of that because he was Sting, and they were trying to hype him as something.